Um, so we're here to talk about what some are calling education 3.0 or the internet of education. Others call it LER, learner employment record, or ILR, integrated learner record, or the learning economy. But whatever it becomes called, it's a vision of the near future in which people's skills become machine readable data that can be held and controlled from a digital wallet app and exchange like currency for learning and employment opportunities on the open internet, the way that goods and services are exchanged today. So at its simplest, it's the relationship between three independent parties. The issuer, which is the education institution, the holder, which is the student, or if they're a minor, their adult guardian, and the reviewer, which is the downstream education or employment uh, uh, actor who's looking to understand more about the learner and employment record. So the core use scenario that we are talking about is when a learner achieves an outcome, an issuer asserts a cryptographically signed credential that can be held in any standard digital wallet app where the holder can control verifiable presentation to a reviewer in any jurisdiction. And again, the key to this is that the issuer, the holder, and the reviewer all are in uh, different organizations often, where the holder is starting in the same organization as the issuer, but over the holder's lifetime, they go through many, many, many different education record issuer organizations. And so they are out of the network of the issuer. And the reviewer similarly is typically out of the network of the holder and the issuer. So these are three different networks that are without having any data sharing agreement between them, uh, party to party, they're able to trust and exchange information across the open internet. So that is the premise of what um, this movement is trying to create. And it starts with a set of technical standards that are coming together in IEEE's integrated learner record. And so we are in the process now and we'll be voting in January on a framework of five components that make this Internet of Education triangle work. And so that is the way that the actual education record is created, number one. Number two, the way that it's wrapped, signed, and published. Number three, the way that the uh, holder of the universal wallet curates and controls access to records. And then number four, that information presented to the reviewer, how that reviewer is able to check the uh, validity, the verification and trust of that, those records without having to go back directly to the issuer. So across a distributed ledger. And so what makes this possible to work across networks is a series of shared meta registries. And in the uh, Education 3.0 call earlier today, we uh, had a presentation and discussed an initiative from the US Chamber of Commerce Foundation's T3 Innovation Network to create this 5A skill crosswalk, the Open Competency Framework Coalition, um, which attempts to create a common service between the various uh, Kate, uh, competency framework and credential publishers in the United States. Um, the discussion is to uh, have these registries immediately bridge from the North American registries to the European Union registries 
And um, our hope is that this work of, 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 the, of the group that um, has, has come together through this AP collab can be, can help plant the seeds um, for Asia Pacific to also participate in the shared registries so that your networks of issuers, holders, and reviewers are able to freely interact with the networks of issuers, holders, and reviewers in Europe um, and in the Americas. So fundamentally, this is about putting our education and skills records in the equivalent of a credit card or a credit card application in your digital wallet. So often we, we've talked about badge backpacks or we've talked about envelopes um, that wrap packages. Um, but the most apt metaphor I think is that of a, a credit card in your wallet, a thing that is under your control, a thing that is not like LinkedIn just out on the public web. It's like you wouldn't put all of your bank information out on the public web. You have it, you're able to make a transaction with your credit card, you're able to make transactions across jurisdictions and currency and redeem it for things that you're looking for. So our friends in Learning Economy Foundation are beginning to develop a digital wallet that, um, that uh, with the Lego uh, Education Foundation um, that uh, is an interesting model, working with MIT, applying this technology. Uh, other colleagues of ours are applying this to, uh, to COVID test results in the same way, um, because that same triangle of issuer, holder, and reviewer verifier um, is, um, is directly applicable to health records as well. Again, putting the control, the absolute control of this personal data in the hands of the holder, where they and only they are saying who gets to view and who gets to access any of their personal data and is able to retrieve that access, bring it back after. So the access is provided and then it's able to be pulled back. In North Dakota, where my team is leading a project, it's the first statewide application of this, uh, this uh, approach, that same triangle, applying it to the high school transcript of every high school student in this state. And so we are, we just actually today um, saw a demonstration of this comprehensive learner record wallet that immediately will be posting, uh, publishing this standard transcript data. But because it's based on the comprehensive learner record, <coughs> it's also optimized for skill data skill mastery assertions. And there's work that Sam, I think a lot of um, your prior work connects into these ideas of ontologies, machine readable ontologies and taxonomies that have relationships to each other. So this enables us to develop these pathways of learning that are some of the shared utilities. So these pathways would not uh, uh, come from the wallet, from the holder. These are available across distributed meta registries that, um, that can be shared between systems and holders of the issuer, the holder, and the reviewer. So in Broward County Public Schools, which is the sixth largest school district uh, in the United States, um, they are um, on a campaign to uh, work with some of the poorest and most vulnerable kids in America to get them to, um, to pro pro progress to success. And so I, we created this uh, a graphical representation based on, I don't know if people are familiar with this graph. It is um, purported to be the most famous, one of the most famous graphs in all history, and it's a graph that Edward Tufte popularized of the march and retreat of Napoleon's troops 
going from left to right with the size, the temperature in the bottom, the geography, um, and the attrition as the army got smaller and then retreated and split um, all in one graph. So um, I've attempted with Broward to articulate where that where a, a, a similar progression with points of loss are for uh, public school students in Broward County Public Schools, where the risks of birth and the transition to kindergarten are great. And then the hurdles of reading by third grade, algebra by eighth grade, uh, transitioning successfully to high school, and then fundamentally, the biggest hurdle in the United States is post-secondary completion. In the United States, only 50% of the students who begin higher education complete. For most students in the United States, they have debt, but not degrees at the end of their experience with higher education. Higher education student debt has gone from 200 billion to $1.5 trillion um, over the last 10 years. And in the United States, it is the one legal debt that you cannot declare bankruptcy to get out from. So even President Obama, when he became president, was still paying off his student debt. So to help learners navigate through all the different learning experiences that they may have in their lifetime, uh, we need some type of a GPS for learning, something that provides a personalized pathway that knows where you are in your learning and where you're trying to get to and what's next. And so in the same way that the GPS system relies upon the satellite network, um, the devices obviously would not function if they didn't have shared uh, satellite uh, information and maps. So tonight we're gonna talk about the principles of uh, this, these ideas less about the technology and more about the values. What if these, uh, these technologies around learning just perpetuate existing inequalities across the globe? What if like is happening with the internet that it is truly creating more um, um, uh, uh, use of human capital um, to perpetuate income uh, uh, inequality. So we're, we're gonna talk about these 10 principles and I wanna really challenge each one of you. In fact, I'm gonna ask Sam's help to really Socratically call on each of you individually to comment on these principles and to look at them and say, do these articulate the right types of protections that will um, guide this movement towards the way that we would hope it to be implemented. And I wanna be really clear that while we're starting the process of getting global affirmation of these principles, and we hope that tonight each one of you will go to internetofeducation.org and personally affirm these principles if they seem aligned to you. Um, but also that if there is feedback, um, we expect to do a uh, sort of a 2 version of these uh, principles um, sometime in 2021. And so um, we are looking to see whether uh, these principles are the right ones, whether they can be improved to speak to our collective values.